I'm excited. And I'm also feeling quite relaxed, which is really pretty groovy because there's so much going on, so much that could take us out of the relaxed state. But I just felt so mellow. I was sitting back and watching some hypnosis videos. And at first I was gonna not go on, but all of a sudden I just knew I was supposed to be on. Here I am, hello. And as I mentioned in the description, this program is called Vegan Easy Hypnosis. And it is designed to help those who want to transition to plant-based diets or to become full-fledged vegans. Now, the point I wanna make here is that even though that was the original intention of these chats and these programs, they contain messages that will help you in, in numerous ways in your life to be more relaxed, to feel more peaceful, to pull up your own courage and strength and creativity, and to access that divine part of you that is a spark of God, that is connected wholly and fully to Mother Nature and the universe and all the stars and all the things that are bright and beautiful. So yes, of course, it's a meeting about plant-based eating because plant-based eating is the way to connect even more fully to your love, to your light, to your compassion and your warmth. But if you're not quite ready to make that change yet, please listen in anyway and just accept the messages that you want to accept. This is totally selective. Your higher mind, your subconscious, and also your will will decide which of the messages that I offer, which of the things I discuss you want to embrace and which you want to reject. And to be honest, that's how it should be. We should always be able to reject any message anyone gives us. So first and foremost, I want to say, feel free to tune me out if I'm not speaking your language. Years ago, when I first started teaching metaphysical hypnosis, uh, along with my clinical and medical hypnosis, there was a channel that came uh, to a, a video and I watched the channel. The person was channeling uh, a divine energy from spirit. Spirit would step in and borrow their voice and this voice of Samuel would come through. So suddenly the Southern woman would be speaking in a Scottish accent. It was really quite extraordinary. And she would be addressing the need for people to help people to realize that spirit goes on forever and the discussion of reincarnation and all that. So she wanted to help us to see that we could help people realize that even though the physical body isn't immortal, the spirit is immortal and it keeps traveling. So the program was to help us with that. But she said something like, even though we want to teach people, we want to educate people about this amazing thing of reincarnation and all its beauty. We are not here to wake people up. We are here to feed breakfast to the people who are already awake. Let me say that again. This voice of Samuel that was being channeled through Lee Schultz said, we are not here to wake people up. We are here to feed breakfast to those who have already awakened. So what Samuel was trying to say is, yes, we should teach the techniques that help people realize that they've lived many lives and that they can access all that power, all that creativity, that they can heal wounds from the past and even project into the future, all that grand stuff, those concepts that we were teaching. That's what it was about. It was just saying people have to be ready. Just like I know people have to be ready to go to a plant-based diet. And I also know, alas, some people will never be ready. Some people are so conditioned that they need to eat the flesh of dead animals that they will do it forever. That's sad to me, sad for them, but I'm not here to wake people up. I'm here to feed a delicious vegan breakfast to those who are already awake. And I hope that's you or I hope you're waking up. Maybe you've hit the snooze alarm a few times, but there's all kinds of reasons to adopt a plant-based diet. 
hundreds, thousands of reasons to make this change. And they're all good for you. And they're good for the planet. And they're good for the animal kingdom. They're great for your health. All kinds of reasons to make this change. And I can tell you that if you do decide to do it, you don't have to do it instantly. You could decide, okay, I'm going to have a plant-based Monday through Wednesday, or I'm going to have a plant-based half the week and not the other half of the week. You can start that way. You can go slowly, or you can do what many of us do, which is just rip the Band-Aid off and just say, that's it. I'm done with animal products. And for me, rip the Band-Aid off pretty darn fast. I stopped eating meat five years ago on Thanksgiving weekend. And then by January, I had transitioned off dairy. And that was joyful. You know, the reality is, is the most psychologically addictive of all the animal-based foods is dairy. And everybody thinks, oh, it's just dairy, or it's just eggs. They forget it's still animal products. And it was still either stolen from animals or animals were impregnated against their will or caged, their beaks burnt off, their their udders infected from being milked and milked and milked, their babies stolen. They just like look aside from that. They don't seem to care. But when I realized all that, I wished I had stopped eating dairy first. It should have been the first thing. And that would have made all the other things easier. But, you know, again, it's all up to how you want to do this, if you want to do it at all. And again, as I promised, I'll be giving you some great relaxation. Whether you want to do this at all or not is totally your business because I can't wake you up. I can only feed you. And I'm going to feed you some delicious, glorious relaxation in addition to the messages and maybe teach you some tips that you can use for self-control in all kinds of other ways and to enhance your creativity. Oh, and speaking of creativity... Boy, if you like to cook, becoming vegan is really excellent or adopting a plant-based diet because you will realize you can make any kind of food out of vegetables and out of nuts and out of legumes. And it's so delicious and non-greasy and it's revitalizing and healthy. Wow. Wow. I wish I had done it like decades before. And some people ask me, don't you miss the meat? And, you know, to me, When I think about the fact that I used to eat meat, I'm moderately horrified. No, I'm not moderately horrified. I'm full out horrified that I used to not only eat meat, I used to go fishing and jerk fish with a hook uh, into their mouth, fly them into my boat. um, And then uh, my husband at the time would uh, gut them and whatever. And then we would cook them up like it was some glorious event. When in fact, I had just killed a defenseless fish. So thinking about that now is horrifying to me, and it is a big regret. But the biggest regret of all is the memory of throwing the hand-picked lobsters. We'd go to the lobster pound and we get these lobsters that looked really good. You know, we're trained to think that lobsters are the beat-all, end-all of food, or a filet mignon or something, we forget they're suffering. How weird is that? How awful is that? So anyway, I'd go pick out the lobsters that we thought would be the tastiest. They were still alive and kicking. We'd get them home, boil up the water, and I would throw them in the pot. And the poor defenseless lobster would try to crawl out of the pot, you know, try to push the lid off. And I'm like pushing the lid down. So I murdered it by throwing it into boiling water. Pretty disgusting, right? Pretty horrifying. These are things that we've been disconnected from, the reality of our actions. We've been trained that it's not only okay to eat meat and to kill defenseless animals for our food. We've been trained that that's the way to be, that that's the cool thing to do. I'll tell you, over the holidays, all these Facebook posts where I see people bragging about their, their linguine with gallops, and especially when they're coming from my friends, who are spiritual leaders, it kind of blows my mind. We are so disconnected. We've been trained to disconnect from the fact that dead animals and dead fish and birds were helpless. (laughs) In order for them to wind up on our plate, unless they're oysters, we killed them. And if they were oysters, we might have eaten them alive. How gross is that? I heard somebody on Facebook bragging about eating raw oysters and saying she didn't realize at first that they were alive when she ate them. But it was really cool. Do you think it's cool to swallow whole a living being? 
Are you kidding me? Okay, it's the stuff of horror movies. It is horrifying, but we've been disconnected. The great disconnect has occurred, or I should say the big disconnect, because there's nothing great about that disconnection from our hearts, from our brains, from our minds. And the disconnect started decades ago, centuries ago, because we've followed the leader. We've eaten the way our parents ate, and they ate the way their parents ate, and so on. And we were trained that this is what food is good for us. And it's simply not true. Animal flesh, the rotting, decomposing flesh of any kind of dead animals, birds, or fish is never going to be healthy for you. It's never going to energize you. It's never going to make you feel well. So connect with your heart. When you get hungry, focus on your heart and eat from a place of love and compassion. And consider the fact that if you eat any kind of meat, it is a dead animal or a dead fish or a dead bird. Consider that. Consider it. Go backwards in your mind and consider what that being, that living, loving, breathing being went through. There's all kinds of YouTube videos that you can watch that will really show you the whole scene. Um, but I don't want to go too far into it. I don't want you to block me because you're all my friends. Okay, even my church friends get tired of me telling the truth about this stuff because they're still eating dead animals. I was really proud of my pastor. My pastor went vegetarian in the last year. Now I've just got to point out the whole thing about cow's milk being stolen from cows that were forcibly impregnated through rod rape. And on the same day that their babies were born, or within the same few days, the babies were stolen from them and killed for veal. How charming is that? Okay, so I just have to get him to understand that and stop the dairy. Okay, because the dairy... In my mind, that's like the worst of all. None of that was very relaxing, that conversation. But again, I can't say I'm sorry. I'm telling you the truth. And sometimes the truth isn't pretty, but it's always the truth. And hopefully it's enlightening. And hopefully for some of you who have toyed with going vegan or adopting a plant-based diet at least some of the time, maybe the truth that I'm speaking and these things that might be harsh for you to hear, maybe you can let them be like the snooze alarm. You know, you're not ready to wake up yet, but you hear me and I keep talking and I keep pointing out the obvious truth. So let the obvious truth that springs from my lips be like the snooze alarm. You can shut me off. You can block my sound and go back to sleep for another 10 minutes, or you can shut the alarm clock off completely. But eventually, the ideal thing is to wake up, is it not? Isn't it great when you wake up? And I did a video once called Wake Up While You Still Can. Because animal products clog your arteries. They feed cancer cells. They do all kinds of horrible things, rob you of energy. Whereas vitally alive, plant-based food, sprouts, avocados, fresh-picked fruits and vegetables, or any fruits and vegetables, they weren't reared standing in their own excrement like animals were. They weren't confined in tight cages like the animals were. The beautiful fruits and vegetables, they grew up in the light of the sun and the sparkling stars. They grew up kissed by butterflies and bees and bathed with fresh morning dew and the rain. They grew up in the love and light a spirit. How beautiful is that? So of course, they possess the kind of energy that will energize us. How beautiful. I'm so grateful. And as a bonus, they're delicious. And they don't mess up the atmosphere. Eating plants is so much better for the world, for the planet, than us continuing to Go to the killing machines that are the butcheries, that are the factory farms, that are killing a bazillion animals all the time and messing up our planet. Again, not pretty talk, but 
I decided I would rather tell the truth wholly and fully and not hold myself back anymore because it's better than stifling the message. So I'm going to continue to be the alarm clock sounding and hopefully soon you will wake up at the first call. However, if not, you can snooze. You can do this slowly. You can say, hey, up yours, Julie. I'm never going to do this. I like my meat. I like my cheese. Okay, but you now know you're eating the products of dead animals, of animals who've been tortured, raped, confined, their beaks burnt off, all kinds of horrifying things. If you want to continue doing that, that's your karma. I can't control your karma, nor would I want to. I worry about my own stuff. But right now, I know that I have to talk of this because I want the planet to survive. And if it goes on the way it's going on, between the pandemic, which I believe was caused by people eating animals, just like Ebola and uh, the bird flu and mad cow disease. Okay, does that all sound like there's a commonality there? These horrifying diseases all came from animals and animal agriculture and varying things that are all related. So, geez. So everything about fruits and vegetables and booms and grains, excellent. Everything about eating animals, about murdering animals and confining them is horrible. It's that plain. So there I am, I'm telling the truth. Now, I've discovered that telling the truth makes me less popular than when I was lying or going along with the crowd. Isn't that horrible? Isn't it horrible that I have lost about, I don't know, 1,500 Facebook friends? And I'm sure it's got to be because of this, because of my vegan advocacy, because I'm sure I'm just as cute as I've ever been and just as charming and entertaining and sparkly as ever. So it's got to be this. So, oh, well, oh, well, what are you going to do? Because I can't hide from the truth. I've got to tell the truth. That's all there is. And sometimes people lie to themselves. So I'm hoping that you will consider objectively the times that you might be bullshitting yourself. Okay, no offense to the bull. How many times do you make an excuse for doing the wrong thing? How many ya bottles do you use? Do you know what a ya bottle is? That's when somebody makes a suggestion to you that's really sound, that's great, that's loving, that's kind and compassionate, but you immediately say, yeah, but, yeah, but, I'd love to do it, but yeah, but, I can't because my family wouldn't like it. Yeah, but, I can't do it because I have children who will not go along with it. Yeah, but, my husband will flip out if I stop serving meat. Well, yeah, but, that's just a load of crap. Whoever cooks in the house is in charge of the food supply, is usually the one in grocery shops. You can get whatever kind of food you want. And there's so many replacements, people won't even know the difference. If you go on YouTube and find some great YouTube videos, you'll see that you can make this change and it will be easy and it will be more affordable. That's the other, the most recent yeah, but I got was, well, I'd love to go vegan. And my, my adult son even wants to go vegan. Yeah, but it's too expensive. I can't afford to go vegan. It's too expensive. How can it be too expensive to eat vegetables compared to meat. Now, yes, people might think buying a lot of vegetables is expensive if they're also buying filet mignon, shrimp, lobsters, hamburger, chicken, all of it. It all costs a lot of money. But if you're not buying the meat and the other dead animal products and the milk and the cheese, all you got to buy is the vegetables and it's going to be way cheaper than buying the meat. That's just simple mathematics. So again, these yeah buttles come from people that I deeply respect, that I know are just not seeing clearly. Again, I hope they hear the snooze alarm and I hope it wakes them up if the alarm didn't because they're only bullshitting themselves. So there's all kinds of things that we wind up doing to follow the leader. I used to watch, before I woke up, I used to watch The Real Housewives, and they'd, they'd get on and start fighting. This was before I was a vegan, and I was argumentative as anybody else. 
So I'd like, like to watch other people arguing over stupid crap. So I would watch the show and they would be doing stuff like going to a spa. And the one, one of the episodes was about them discovering that they could look younger if they went to this spa that did a treatment that utilized sparrow shit. Can you imagine that? A beauty treatment made from sparrow excrement. That's what they were going to have put on their face and pay hundreds of dollars for. And they all thought it was brilliant. You know, get an appointment, let's do it. Got to look good. They could have just started drinking more water or lay off the liquor. Those people were always bombed. They made like a sport out of drinking, which there's nothing that's going to premature age us more than drinking liquor of any kind. Now, you can tell yourself you deserve a treat. You have to have a drink after work. Why not drink water? Why not have a cup of herbal tea or even coffee? You know, coffee's still kind of a drug. But, you know, some of us are still drinking coffee. That's on you. But if you drink a lot of alcohol, it's going to prematurely age you. And it's going to take you away from your family and friends. And it's going to, depending on how much you drink, make you sound really ridiculous and look really ridiculous. Personally, I don't need alcohol to look or sound really ridiculous. I'm a showboat. I can look ridiculous and be the life of the party without ever drinking a drop of alcohol. I know that I'm just as much fun now, completely off booze, as I was when I used to party uh, with alcohol. I also know that for those parents who go home after work and they're looking forward to having a beverage or two, of the alcoholic variety, well, okay, you think you've earned them. You think you deserve them. You think you need them, but that's all a subjective response or answer. The fact is, if you have kids and you go home and you have as much as two beers after work, maybe even as much as one beer, you are taking yourself away emotionally from your children. Think about that. Are you with your children when you're drinking even a beer? Or is that beer influencing you? And what are you teaching your children when you come home and you need a beer or two or a cocktail or a whole bottle of wine? Not a fun topic again, sorry. Sorry, but not sorry. Have you heard that expression? I love that, sorry, not sorry. It just is what it is. Drink water, eat plants decide it's going to be delicious. And now, as promised, I'm going to help you to relax. Let's all together take in a long, slow, deep breath. And exhale, feeling yourself relaxing, relaxing during this session. You can keep your eyes open or closed, whatever suits you. That's right. Breathing and relaxing with your eyes open or closed following your breath in and following your breath out following your breath in and following your breath out getting in touch with that sacred holy flow of breathing that circle of life moving through you relaxing you relaxing you and as you breathe and relax and breathe and relax you can allow your brain waves to slow down the cycles per second of your brain to slow down into first the alpha state, which is about 20 cycles per second, between 20 and 12, or you can go all the way down into the hypnotic level, which is more like below 12, between say four cycles per second and 12. Focusing on a number and deciding how relaxed you want to be right now. You can go all the way in and not remember a word I said. That might be handy. Following your breath in and following your breath out. Following your breath in and following your breath out. And as you continue to breathe and to relax, you can ask your higher mind, your inner pharmacist, to helpfully release an ideal flow of endorphins into your being. Endorphins, your body's own safe, natural narcotic produced by you to help you to feel really, really good, to help all the systems of your body to work well, 
to emotionally stabilize you, to make you feel safe, and to help you to feel really groovy. Imagining now you can turn up your flow of endorphins, your endorphin receptor sites, and imagine that your receptor sites for endorphins are working ideally, magnificently, so that you start feeling warm and cozy and peaceful and relaxed. Continuing to breathe and relax. The more you focus on your endorphins being released, the more relaxed you will feel and the better you will get at it. And you might notice that as you kick up your own endorphins or as you turn them on and allow them to liberally flow, you feel better than you ever felt from alcohol. And if you do it long enough and intentionally enough, you can feel very, very, very relaxed because releasing a little bit of endorphins might be like having a glass of wine or a beer. Releasing a lot of endorphins might be more like having a Percocet. Releasing more endorphins might be like having something stronger than a Percocet. I'm not going to name a bunch of drugs, but you get my point. So keep releasing the endorphins. Releasing. And if you want to make that feeling stronger, you can imagine that you're hooked up to an IV that is releasing endorphins and love and pleasure from the universe pouring in through that IV, this safe, natural, imaginary IV, flooding your body with comfort, with love, with light, with compassion, with joyfulness, all kinds of beautiful, beautiful things pouring into you and through you so that later you can emit the love, the light, and the relaxation, relaxation. And now feel the relaxation and the endorphins rolling through your body as you continue to ebb and flow like you're a beautiful tidal pool that reflects light and love, like you're the waves that kiss the shoreline, like you're the dew on the flower first thing in the morning that drinks in the sun, that feeds the bees and the butterflies, all these bright images, all this perfect beauty flowing through you, loving you, healing you, feeling that relaxation. As you now notice your entire head is relaxed. Your eyes are relaxed. Your cheeks, your mouth, your jaw, your throat, relax, relaxed. And feel that relaxation now pouring into your collarbones and rolling down your shoulders, it might begin to feel as though you're being massaged with strong, soft hands, massaging silky oil across your back and down your arms and into the back of your neck or whatever places you might enjoy being massaged at this time because this is your session. Continuing to breathe and relax as you use your imagination to feel as good as you want. Continuing to breathe and relax. Also, you can add to that any other chemicals and hormones, including serotonin, DHEA, uh, estrogen, progesterone, if those are appropriate for you. Any feel-good chemicals and hormones, any sex hormones in your body, turning them up and allowing your higher mind, your inner pharmacy, to ideally balance them so that you can feel really great so you can be relaxed, so your body functions ideally, and so it is, and so you are groovy. And now you can also imagine that in addition to that IV that is pouring in all the good stuff, that you're beginning to hear beautiful music, whatever kind of music you wanna hear. I like all kinds of music, and I know I feel better as soon as I play music. I've also discovered if I get up in the morning and start dancing, which I do quite frequently, that that day is going to be better than if I fail to do that. So I turn the music on loud. And if someone's around me, I put on headphones because I don't want to be my own, yeah, but alone. I play music, yeah, but people are sleeping. Just put on some headphones. Boogie in your kitchen. Boogie in your hallway. Just boogie. Feeling the energy moving through, kicking up those endorphins 
bringing your body into balance and imagine yourself in any place you want to be and feel love pouring in through your body as you listen to that music that you put in your own head. Perhaps you're playing your favorite song or maybe songs that have very positive messages. But let's pump up the volume of the music and dance. And maybe see yourself dancing or see yourself running or making love or sitting outside or walking through a park. So many great things to do that are natural and healing and loving. And I can tell you for sure that when you remember to eat a plant-based diet or the more often you do it and the more water you drink, and the less intoxicants you ingest of any kind, the more relaxed you will look, the better and younger you will look and feel. And it's kind of like it reverses the aging process, like it's its own fountain of youth. Breathing and relaxing is the glowing healing energy of spirit moves through your head and face, down your throat, helping you to speak the truth to yourself and to be encouraging of your own place in the world, feeling the energy moving through your heart, through your chest, your lungs, feeling the healing relaxation flowing through all your internal organs, relaxing you, relaxing you. So beautiful, so loving, so relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. Doesn't it feel divine to relax? Imagining now you're the back of your head from, from your brain all the way down through your spinal column, all the way out to the base of your spine is lighting up with color and a warm, helpful, healing fluid, a perfect energetic vibration of light from the top of your head all the way down through each of your vertebrae and out through the base of your spine, healing and replenishing you lubing you up in a way that is just really great, helping all the functions of your body to work great. And you can also imagine if that energy that's flowing out all the way down through your spinal column and out through the base of your spine is taking away any toxins, any inappropriate fears or worries are just leaving out through your body, through the base of your spine as you go deeper and deeper. Any regrets, are leaving you as you go deeper and deeper. And what remains is the goodness and your choice to feel better and to take great care of yourself. And go deeper now, go deeper and deeper as the healing energy now flows down into your hips, travels through your reproductive region, and through your sexual reproductive chakra, moving down your thighs and into your knees, and once again, if you choose, you can feel the strong, soft hands massaging the silky oil down your back, into your hips and buttocks, down your legs, into your knees and your thighs and your feet. Oh, doesn't it feel glorious to have your feet massaged, massaged with love and let the endorphins flow and the other feel-good chemicals and hormones flow like liquid love like peace, like a symphony, like your favorite song, like wind chimes, like the sound of children laughing, like the sound of your own laughter, like the sound of people telling you they love you or how great you look. All those helpful sounds and vibrations and energetic frequencies of love moving through you. And if you really want to go deep, you can imagine now in addition to the massage and your whole body relaxing, including your arms relaxing, like a flow of energy is cascading through your shoulders, down your arms, into your elbows, out through your wrists, hands, fingers and fingertips. That's right, the energy is now pouring down your arms and out through your hands, fingers and fingertips, all the way from your head and down your spine and down your legs and out through your toes, helping you to be perfectly and peacefully relaxed, relaxed. Doesn't it feel great to relax? And now let's take that 
to an even higher place as you imagine that the air you are breathing contains a special healing energy, but also magic, magic that makes you feel more pleasured, higher, happier than you've ever been naturally. Continuing to follow your breath in and out as you allow the magical air to merge with your energy and your oxygen and to flow through your body and to love you and to pleasure you. Breathing in and breathing out as you allow yourself to feel 10 times better or 100 times better or 1,000 times better. Breathing and relaxing the special air. And you can also imagine if you enjoyed the imagery of the massage, you can imagine that those massage therapists are back and they're now massaging you with a special ointment that helps you to feel really high, very relaxed, all naturally. That's right, the strong, soft hands, perfectly addressing your body with love and the healing ointment and the pleasuring ointment and the special air and the love and the light and the music are all surrounding you, enabling you to wake up from any self-imposed nightmares, to wake up from programming that fails to serve you, to wake up from the lies that people tell you, to wake up from old past programming and to realize the best possible high in the world can be created inside your own body. You only need yourself and your own choice to be happy, to feel confident and peaceful, to connect with God, to be God in your own self because we are each a spark of the divine light. To know that, to live it, to love it, to be it, to happily walk through life proud, more concerned about doing the right thing than about being popular. I sleep well at night, by the way. I really do. And the other comment I will make before I bring you back is you can re-watch this video, any parts of it you want, and it will make you feel or help you to feel just as good as you're feeling right now. So please save it. I'm also going to put it on YouTube. It'll be there. Um, on the World Vegan Assembly channel, Vegan Easy Hypnosis, on the World Vegan channel. And now go deeper and feel higher and higher and higher as you see yourself. More compassionate, more creative, more self-assured, more self-loving, very aware of what you put on your plate physically in the form of food and as well as metaphorically how much is on your plate and what is on your plate and that can be how much is on your work plate how big is your workload get in touch with how many things you cram onto that plate the plate of your life the plate at your dinner table and please look and see what is serving you and what you would be better off without and what will heal your life and help to heal the beautiful planet Earth. Breathing and relaxing now, if you wanna just stay in this nice place, this place of natural high, you can ignore me when I count you up, but if you have something else to do, as you hear the count from one to five, you can return fully alert and clear at the number five and go on about your life and know that we'll be back again. We'll be back with more vegan easy hypnosis and other hypnosis programs. I live to do hypnosis and I'm glad to be of service. I'm Julie G counting you up now. One, getting in touch with your body and breathing. Two, beginning to move. Three, aware of the room around you. Four, feeling great, feeling relaxed, feeling loving. And five, sure of your own success become fully alert and clear now if you so choose or take a nap whichever you prefer five alert and clear 
Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you've had a great time. I love you. Peace out.